Hello and welcome to this presentation about best practice for integration architecture modernization with Apache Camel. My name is Klaus Ibsen and I'm a software engineer from Red Hat. Um, I've been working on Camel for a long time as the tech lead, wrote a couple of books on Camel. Uh, I'm from Denmark and currently live in Denmark, but I have uh, lived for 10 years in Sweden, in Malmö. So yeah, it was near Denmark anyway. So in this presentation, we are mainly talking about Camel, but you know how Camel has progressed over the time from you know traditional uh, enterprise um, ESP systems to a uh, modern cloud native. So before we start, what is Camel? Uh, well, Camel is the Swiss Army of Integration. It's one of the most active products at Apache Camel. It's been active for over 12 years. Uh, it's actually a giant Swiss army knife with a lot of functionality. So what do you use Camel for? You use it for integration, so to integrate different systems, you know, and then you can use Camel to plug in between and glue the systems uh, together. So Camel is a Java-based integration framework. It has great runtime support for many of the great runtimes you know today with Spring Boot, and we're gonna see about Quarkus, Java E, MicroProfile, and so on. It's based on um, the ideas from a book called the Enterprise Integration Patterns, and comes with a lot of components, which you can think of like Kafka connectors. And you mainly use um, a DSL, which you can write in Java XML to define and describe how systems are integrated in camel routes and it can integrate with almost everything. And speaking of routes, here are two examples. Very simple one is just a straight one-to-one -one integration between a file and a GMS queue. So in Java code you just say from file to GMS and in XML you can do the same. At a runtime it doesn't matter from camel, it becomes the same on a load. So just to give you a quick overview of Apache Camel 3 and the products we have here, which will be relevant for this uh, presentation. So we have Camel, which is the Swiss knife of integration. Then you can run Camel on Spring Boot. And then we have Camel on OSGI. And then the following three we're gonna focus on in this presentation is Camel K for serverless Camel on Kubernetes. Then we have Camel Quarkus, which is a, a fast Camel, also native compiled with Graal. And then at the end, we talk a bit about the latest product, Camel Kafka Connectors. So let me just spend a little time talking about the evolution of integration from the lens of Camel. So um, over 10 years ago, this was the Camel website. This is the oldest I could find is from uh, January 2009. And this was our website for a long time, but today we have an, a modern website. So back then, uh, many years ago, it was based on the principles of Sora. It was good principle with contract first, uh, do service coupling, uh, reusability and, and composability and then so on. But it tends to be this centralized software and teams where things they become a bottleneck. It's not um, designed for chains and it's not cloud friendly, it's not uh, immutable containers and all that kind of things. So uh, if you look at an architecture from back then, this is a very, very old one. Uh, you may not know it, but it's the, based on a specification called JBI. So there was a product called a passive service mix that was created create around this specification and service mix and was one of the you can say fathers to camel so inside service mix there was a routing engine and that became camel uh, uh, today's esp architecture is based on primary based on uh, runtime with osdi called apache Carafe, and then you can have uh, many camel applications running in, in one giant jvm you know kind of like a monolith uh, but in recent time, microservice architecture has evolved, and you know, where it's more like it's so designed for chains, you know, individual teams, bounded contacts, and all that yada yada. 
um, you know, so 1.0 based on 12 factor and Netflix stack and so on. But, and here in, in Camel, um, we saw people picking up that and, uh, you know, primarily using Spring Boot to build uh, the different uh, microservice for Camel. Uh, so we say this is microservice 1.0. And you can do that today with Spring Boot and Camel. And, but lately, and what we're gonna focus on in this presentation is focused on cloud native architectures, where, you know, we have a infrastructure that can aid your um, applications. So you have the application concerns separate from the infrastructure concerns. So the infrastructure takes care of networking and security and discoverability and many other things. So it's truly cloud native. And how can you design or uh, camel applications or integration application in cloud native? You can still use Spring Boot, but Spring Boot is becoming a bit of a heavy bottleneck there. And you run those in, in when I say cloud, I mean Kubernetes and the concept in Kubernetes is to package your application into a, a pod uh, as the deployment unit. And in the pod, you can maybe in recent time start to use uh, service meshes. I'm not gonna talk too much about service meshes, but it's, the, it's about uh, networking. Uh, it's, you can also, not use service mix and avoid that, but this was probably in the beginning. We see service mix become more and more key component in the infrastructure, and it's also a part that you can get in, in the latest versions of uh, OpenShift. Um, if you are also building integration application, you don't need Spring Boot, you can just use Camel. Uh, we have something called Camel Main for that. And also there is a great product, uh, Quarkus, and this is really, really an awesome product. I, I encourage people to take a look at. And Camel uh, works great with Corvus as well. And then uh, serverless architectures, uh, we have a very exciting product called Camel K. So I'm uh, happy to present to you today. You can run on uh, in the Kubernetes with and without uh, Kinetic. And speaking of serverless, what are some of the requirements for running serverless? So in a serverless uh, platform, we want to be able to scale quickly up to and down the pace ba based on demand because we only want to service request and, and when there's a demand for it. So we should have rapid scaling, but also very important, we should be able to scale to zero. Uh, so there's no cost of having the service on the platform when there's no demand for it and the platform should have a vending and routing so the service can you know pass uh, data uh, using events and, and be able to have the reli reliable routing and networking on the application side of things they put some requirements to it that the application should uh, be able to start up really fast but also be able to give a fast first time to response which you're going to see later and also your application should not be loaded in the, in the in the containers in the cloud so they should have low restrictions on memory and cpu and this size as well and here are some of the products that could build uh, that could give us all that of course on the platform we're talking about kubernetes openshift and kinetic but on the application side you know i'm really proud to say that we have camel k and quarkus that can really deliver those on for example with java technologies and speaking of Camel K, so what is that? So I really like this phrase that is a lightweight integration based uh, on Apache Camel born on Kubernetes with serverless superpowers. So it runs on vanilla Kubernetes, but you can of course also run it on OpenShift and it gives you the best if you have K native. So what is, but well, how do you do that? This is what Camel K is all about, you know, there is a trend where developers just want to focus on dealing with uh, business logic and not deal with run times and all that kind of things. They just want to integrate systems and go serverless. So what they can do with Camel K is to write Camel routes in a single file. So what we have here 
is a camel route written in in for example in, um, Java or Groovy. So it is a telegram. So every time there's a chat from a telegram, we do some constant transformation, send a message to a Kafka and take the message from the Kafka and set, call it HTTP service. Then we can say uh, camel run. Uh, camel K comes with a command line tool called camel with a K. So we say camel run and then the name of the file. And then Viola, it, it runs in the, in the cluster. So how does that work? So this is the high level architect of camel K. So on one side we have the development environment and on the other side we have the cloud environment. And when I say cloud, it can be local, you can run the cloud run on your local laptop like with Minikube or Minshift, something like that, or you can run on your real cloud. So what happens is that as a developer you use your environment and you write your code and then you use the tool to uh, update your code into the cluster. And this is done, Kubernetes allows to extend itself using something called a custom resource definition, CRD. So what we've done in, in Camel is to create an integration custom resource. And then there is an operator, Camel K operator, that reacts on these uh, changes to the CRDs. So it listens to all the custom resource definitions that are related to Camel and integration. And then the operator has all the logic. This is where all the smarts is. So the operator figures out what to do. So it takes your code, look at it, figures out, okay, what set of dependencies and run times and whatnot do I need to make this run? And it figures out what to do and it can do it really fast. And we're gonna see a, a slide here. And, and this was one of the key goals of CAMK was to also to be able to run it really fast. So one of the issues with running uh, applications on, on containers is that you have to, every time you do a change, you have to rebuild the container image because, and that takes time. And those are the red, yellow, and green bars here. And those are different depending on, let's say, with an, if you're building the image locally or on a remotely, a source to image and all kind of things, but they always take time. But Camel K can do that really fast. This is the blue one. Maybe the first time it has to build a new image, so prepare for it, but every time you do code changes and whatnot, it can reuse the existing image and do it really fast. And we're gonna see that in a moment in a demo. You can install CamK from uh, Operator Hub. Operator Hub is a website where you can find operators for many things to run in a container or Kubernetes. So go and look there, you can find how to run databases, Kafka and many other things. So one click install. So this is the, has a quick demo of Camel K. So on the top we have a text editor. It's just a Java code. It's a simple timer to lock. And on the bottom we have uh, command lines where I uh, use the command line. And then on the other side of the, we have uh, where I lock the uh, activity in the pods. So let's see the demo. It's gonna pre-record it, so I'm playing the video. So pay attention. So here in the command line, in the bottom, I am uh, looking at the Camel K examples. You can see this number of files there. Um, over on the other side, I've start to get a watch the pods. You can get pods uh, watch, and you can see there's only the operator running. I go back to the examples, and now I'm want to run one of the examples. So first, I say camel version, so you can see which version I'm using. This is uh, RC1. Uh, we have RC2 today. So I say camel run, and then the name of the file in slash slash dev mode, which means it will run the development mode, so it will actually tail the log and rack when I do source code changes. Now you can see it says hello camel k is already running. Now I say change the file to say by camel k, I press save, and I can see it's instantly updating. Uh, the Kubernetes is quickly to uh, spin up a new pod and terminate the old one. And I say buy again, camel k, you can see it updates immediately. And this works in any Kubernetes cluster, whether it's local or remote. I can also do a typo, for example, uh, forget the semicolon, so I'll get a compile error. Uh, as you can see, I get a compile error. Uh, 
So this is also one of the magic of Camel K. So I can also do uh, um, make it run faster, saying uh, the timer should not trigger every 12 milliseconds instead of every second, and it goes faster, as you can see. So that's pretty awesome. Let's move on. So another product I want to focus on is Camel Quarkus. So Camel or Quarkus is trying to solve one of this big problem that Java is slow. Especially um, Java has especially a problem with uh, density uh, on containers. So you can pack together a lot more Node applications or Go applications in the same space than a traditional cloud native Java stack. Uh, that takes up, you know, potentially hundreds of megabytes where the others can run in tens. And that's a big problem you know, on the on the containers. Also, Java has a scaling problem. It tends to it was built for another time where you know you boot up a single JVM, a big process and keep it running for a long time. And then over time it warms up and gets faster and better and whatnot. Whereas in cl modern cloud world, you know, you only, you have more short-lived uh, tasks that run for uh, only when it needs and then it should be able to scale up and scale down quickly. And certainly also scale to zero when there's no demand for it. So these two things is what Quarkus is trying to help it from a Java point of view. Um, on the website, they say Quarkus is a sub supersonic subatomic Java, which is, yeah, yeah, nonsense. So what is it? So it's a Kubernetes native Java stack tailored for Graal and Open JDK hotspot, crafted from the best of breeds, Java libraries and standards. Okay, some like these uh, stack lines, I don't. But what it is, is just fast Java. Fast Java in two modes, native mode with Graal VM compile, which is the uh, the fastest, but also the hardest one to get to. And then you have in the middle, which is just JVM modes. It's an optimized JVM mode. This is what is really awesome and many people are, are using. So Quarkus has also a very minimal footprint. This is a slide from the website. So you can see here the, the gray ones is the traditional cloud native stacks. Uh, 140 megabytes, but even just by using Quarkus in JVM mode, so you just add Quarkus to your Java product, it can reduce the memory to half. And if you go full cloud native, it's only tens of megabytes. But also pay attention that it's really fast on the first response time. So a traditional one might take four or five seconds to boot up, warm up, and give a response. Even in JVM mode, in the blue one, it can get around a second or so. And if you go cloud native, it's you know in milliseconds. And here's uh, an example from Camel, just a screenshot saying that Camel starts up in 13 milliseconds. Uh, it takes up 16 megabyte of total memory, our SS re resident set, and the image size is 68 megabyte. That's a big to pick. Uh, we're working on reducing that. I think we are down to 20 or so in in the latest uh, Camel 3.2 development we're currently working on. So stay tuned for much faster and better now. And let's give us a couple of demos. So this one is, is the timer to lock uh, demo. So it's from the Cameron Corpus website. Uh, examples timer to lock. So what I'm going to do, I uh, have checked out that source code and I'm going to the editor. This is uh, visual code and I'm opening the example. And again, it's just a timer to lock. Uh, it says from timer, hello world. And then down here in the terminal, I'm typing maven, compile, Quarkus dev. So I run uh, in uh, Quarkus in developer mode. So the idea is that you boot up uh, your application and then Quarkus keep on monitoring and uh, does hot uh, deployment when you do code changes, just as you saw in actually in Camel K. So I say by world, and as you can see, it's immediately updating down in the terminal. And this is not running any cloud, this is running locally, and this is just standard Java. 
Um, but you know, it of course also works in, in the cloud as well. Now I can of course change the, to go a bit quicker. And this tool um, in Visual Code also have plugins and one of the plugins is for Camel. So what I'm gonna see here is that you can actually, for the Camel timer component, you can get a list of all the options you can configure on that and the doc documentation as well. Um, so this is really handy. So you don't have to switch to the website and read the you know, on the website what the options are and what they can do. And that's really lovely. And also, we can see that the tool understands that all the existing CAM components you can use. So here's a list of them, the Amazon, ABS, um, the Bezium, uh, SQL, FTP, Google, Hazelcast, and so on, Kubernetes even, MongoDB, and so on, Salesforce. So that's a lot. Okay, let's move on. So this is the second demo, which is actually very interesting, I think. So to get started with Quarkus is that you can go to the website Quarkus.io and then click start coding and you can create a new product where you can type in, you know, group ID, artifact ID for Maven or choose Gradle to build. You can look for extensions. So extensions is actually, you know, like custom components for Quarkus and we, there are a lot of different for Hibernate and many other things. But you know, I, I like uh, uh, camels. So what I'm going to do here is I'm picking some extension. I want to have health checks. So I choose small right health checks and I'm looking for the metrics. Apparently I can't find it. So I can type it in, in the type box metrics. Yes. And then I also need uh, the camel bits. I'm uh, scrolling down. I think camel is in the bottom integration core. As you see, there's so they're doing uh, metrics and health checks. So basically, I just want to build a, a basic um, REST application or HTTP application with build uh, with out of the box health checks and and, and metrics using these uh, extensions. And you, then you can click the generate button, and it will download that. I already did that, and I create a little application here. Um, there's a REST service here, slash hello, slash hello. Uh, you can see, uh, you can get that. And then this is my camel route. So I have my route extends route builder. Route builder is from Apache Camel. And I add the application scope, the annotations to the, the route is uh, discovered. Then I say from platform HTTP to integrate with the HTTP platform from uh, Quarkus. I say hello camel, and then I say camel runs on a host name. So I can get the name of the host where it runs. And now I am running this one. I already uh, pre-compiled this one. And I already also uh, so we can see it run. Uh, this is a fat jar, uh, 1.3 seconds to run, uh, boot up uh, with all these features. I can go on the localhost 8080, and this is the welcome page for Quarkus. I can slash slash hello, and I get the hello response, and I can say hello camel, of course, and I can see it runs on my laptop. And I should also be able to get the health check. It's up and you get the camel status as well. So it's a combined um, health check. And I can get the metrics. So you can get these metrics and, and gather them into a centralized dashboard, you know, Prometheus, Grafana and all that. One pr message process, it says exchange total 1.0. And now it should say two if i refresh the screen you can see now it's 2.0 okay so what we would like to do now is to um, gather the memory so i did a little script here to try to gather the um, uh, total memory uses of that one in 
was 198 megabytes. That's the resident set, so it's the total heap, whatever you know in Java. And that matters because that is the t memory that is will be reserved and used on, on a Kubernetes cluster, for example. And that's a bit high. Uh, so that was the JVM mode. Um, so now I'm running the native compile, and it starts in 20 milliseconds. And Camel is 2 milliseconds, so that's fantastic fast. So that takes about 20 mega, so a little, a little less because the, the the script is a bit off a little bit. And I can of course do the same thing, hello Camel, on 8080 and so on, yada yada. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is to um, have a script that say run many, so I can run 100 instances of that application from the range of 8000 to 8100 on port numbers. So now I start 100 instance. I started a 100 instance and I get the total memory. Now it's 1.8 gigabytes. So that's 18 megabytes per per piece and I can of course still do some port uh, 44 hello and hello camel. So that works. I can choose another port number, 96, it also runs of course. Now I can actually kill them all, now they're all dead. I click this dead in the browser, and now I start them again, and I refresh, you know. So that is really, really fast to start up and service first time to response. Okay, let's move on to the last item, um, the Camel Kafka connector. I'm not gonna say, I'm not an expert in Kafka, but of course, uh, it's a very popular streaming platform. But one of the features that the Kafka has is uh, that it has uh, a Kafka connectors. And what is a Kafka connector? Yeah. Well, again, uh, it's a way of being able to feed data into the Kafka and take data out of Kafka into other external systems. So it's kind of like a camel a bit. And they have something they call the source connectors and sync connectors. Uh, so what we've done is uh, um, at Apache Camel is to create a product called Camel Kafka Connectors. It was started as a prototype by Red Hat and then donated to Apache Software Foundation end of last year. So in a simple way, we want to be able to use as many or if not all the Camel components as sync uh, uh, and sources to Kafka. And these are the first prototypes we've done. These are the ones we had tested the most and whatnot, and just as part of a prototype. And there is a little demo of that. Uh, Andrea Cosentino, a colleague of mine, has created. Uh, you can find it on that link on the uh, GitHub. So it's uh, taken from uh, S3 into Kafka and then to a GMS message program. Now, I have to say that all these connectors are 100% open source, free to use, whatnot. They are not part of a commercial platform. Anybody can use them. So you're not logged into, okay, I go to Kafka Connector um, Marketplace and I can see some of them are community and some are only from a, a specific vendor. I cannot use them and uh, the source code is not available. This is 100% open source. And then you can run Kafka on Kubernetes using the Streamz project, which is also an open uh, operator hub. So. Um, the attention with the Kafka connectors, uh, Camel Kafka connectors, is to uh, have as little coding as possible, mode mo uh, and primary only configuration. So these are the meat from the what you need to write, uh, or what Andrea did, is to set up the Camel source and then the Camel sync. So the source is the one that takes from S3 to Kafka, and it uses the Camel um, AWS S3 connectors. And then on the other side, you use the Camel GMS components. There's one called Simple GMS, as SGMS, and the two is for GMS2 API. And then just a little bit of configuration and off you are. And there's also a demo of that. There's a three minute video here. Um, I just put it in the slide so you can find it here, but we are running out of time, so I'm gonna continue. Just to give you some uh, links for more material, these are Camel, of course, the Camel K website, Quarkus, Kafka connectors. There's also YouTube on that little Camel demo I showed. If you're interested in hearing about 
when Kamal K was created and by whom, you know, Nicola and Luca have some blocks. Um, there's also a great webinar by these two guys. Uh, and then there's also a video on Kamal K and Knative, which is a bit harder to run because you need a big cluster still to run Knative. But it's working getting better and better. And there's also a couple of great webinars or, or talks. Um, me, uh, myself and Andrea did a, a more in-depth uh, overview of Camel Tree. You can find it on, on the first link. And then I will recommend uh, Bilkin's uh, QCon talk in 2020 about the evolution of distributed system in Kubernetes where he really is talking about uh, design patterns and whatnot. This is really interesting. He's really a great source of this kind of on a higher abstraction level. And his book is very popular, The Kubernetes Patterns. You can download it from that link. On my book, um, Camel in Action, um, is all about Camel. Unfortunately, it's not free. You have to pay a little bit. Some people have to li live in these times. But you can find it on uh, Amazon and other bookstores. Uh, Red Hat, um, at Red Hat, the commercial wise, we have the Red Hat integration product, which comes with Camel and all these kind of things. And you can find the overview of the middleware products and the ED, EDA architecture as well. Thank you very much. And now we'll have open for questions. And sorry for running over time a bit.